In today's lesson, units, how we count things. Turns out there's only one system for counting and using and measuring units, and it's called the international system or metric system. Uh, there really is no other system. The metric system relies on using units that have been agreed upon by scientists and businessmen worldwide to make it easier to communicate. The entire world uses it. See? The entire world. <coughs> On here, we have illustrated in red all of the places, all of the backwards, podunk, crazy, redneck places in the world that do not use the metric system. They are shown in red, and you can see them right there. We have this one right here, uh, this one right here, and this one right here. This one is known as the United States of America. Uh, this one is called Liberia. Liberia, I don't know if you know that, uh, the capital is Monrovia, named after James Monroe. They're so into the United States that they actually named their capital after one of our presidents. So if we're going to be using some other system, well, sure they, surely they will too. And this last one is, uh, well, they go by Myanmar now. It used to be called Burma. The reason it's not called Burma anymore is because some horrible dictator took over and oppresses his people. And they had a hurricane come through, a cyclone that killed like millions of people, and he wouldn't let international aid organizations in to help them. And he's pretty cool with the English system. So, uh, the English system is just dumb. So, you have to use it if you live in the United States, because we're weird. But most places don't use that. So... Uh, so if we're going to use these different systems, as we have to because we live in the United States, most people just get to learn one system, but we get to learn two because everyone uses metrics, so we need to know that. But in our little cubby hole of the world, we tend to use English, so we got to kind of familiarize ourselves with both, both, which is kind of annoying, makes my job as a science teacher a little bit more complicated than most people in the world. So... Let's talk about these different systems and how they're different. So if we want to measure, say, a time, if we want to measure a time, the English system uses seconds, minutes, and hours, and the metric system uses seconds, minutes, and hours. Yay, they're the same. Yay, we can skip that one. They're the same. What about distances? For distances, the English and metric system do not use the same base. In the English system, and one of the fun things about the English system is it doesn't have base units. It just uses whatever it feels like at the time. Uh, so it uses like inches, it uses yards, it uses miles, it uses furlongs. What? Uh, what? I don't care. The metric system uses the meter. So um, there you go, meter, we're done. Now there are other things you can do with meters. You can throw things in front of them. Uh, that's how the metric system works. You can put like centa in front of it and now you're like some fraction of a meter and we'll talk about all that later. Right now we're just introducing ourselves to the base units. The basic units that you use before you start throwing things on top of it. What about mass? For mass, the English system uses the slug. Yes, that's right, the slug. And for the metric system we use the gram. You've probably heard of that a little bit. For weight, if you want to measure how much something weighs, the English system uh, will use the pound, whereas the metric system will use the newton. There are other ways you could probably do that, but that's the base unit. Uh, temperature. Temperature in the English system, we use the degree Fahrenheit, and in metric, they use the degree Celsius. Now, this is the one place I will not yell at the English system. We don't have time to get into it right now, but it turns out that the English system Fahrenheit is really not any worse than the metric system Celsius. They kind of just do different things. Uh, the last one we'll talk about is volume, how much space t something takes up, how big it is. In the English system, there are uh, uh, 800 billion different ways to measure it. You can measure the teaspoon, the tablespoon, you can measure the cup, the pint, the gallon, the quart, the hogshead, of course, and in the metric system we have just the liter. And so you can see that 
for one reason, it's a lot easier because there's just one base unit in the metric, whereas there's all these crazy different things in the English system. So why is metric better? Well, it's about a thousand times easier to use. You want to convert something, move the decimal point. Hey, I got a number. It's 850 kilograms. I want to know how many grams that is. Well, I'm going to write 850, and then I'm going to move the decimal point three places because I know how to do that because I learned metric and I'm done. Whoa, yay. What about milligrams? Oh, well, um, you know what? I'm going to move it three more places. Now, I didn't tell you how I know that, but you can learn it. It's not that hard. And so that's how you convert from one thing to another thing to another thing in metric. Now let's do English. How many feet are in eight miles? Well, I'm going to take eight feet times 5,280, which is what? 40,000, 41, I, I don't even know, 43,640. I'm just going to guess because I don't care, and it's a stupid question. What about yards? Let's, uh, eight times uh, 1,760 will get me that answer. Well, what if I wanted it in inches? Well, I'm going to go take 8 times uh, 5,280, and then I'm going to multiply it by 12, because all of these numbers, 5,280, 1,760, uh, 12, they're very easy to know numbers that no one ever had to spend any time memorizing. Um, of course, teaspoons and a hogshead, we could do that real easily. Uh, no, we couldn't. So let's just go ahead and do that. Did you know that Google can tell you things? Um, I don't know if you realize this or not, but we can actually go to Google and we can actually just type in something. One hogshead equals how many teaspoons? And it'll tell us. That's nice. It'll do calculations for you. One hogshead is 48,384 teaspoons. Of course, you all knew that those both measure volume, right? Um, you can do all sorts of things. You can do uh, 70 miles per hour equals... Oh, look, they already know what I'm going to ask. Here it is down here. It's 31.2928 meters per second. But that's not as fun. How about four, uh, 4.5 light years per uh, light years per decade into oh into uh, miles per hour. How about that one? There we go. Oh, there you go. 4.5 light years per decade is 301,777,483 miles per hour. Yes, Google can calculate things. Uh, but I'm going to teach you how to do this on your own because, uh, well, I would say because you're not always going to have Google with you, but that's probably a lie. You probably will always have Google with you with smartphones and everything. I'm going to teach you how to convert things basically so that you won't be an idiot. So that's what we're going to be spending some time to do. Here's summarize today's lesson. The English system is hard to use. You have to memorize all sorts of crazy numbers all over the place. Uh, three teaspoons in a tablespoon, how many tablespoons in a cup, you know, two cups in a pint, two pints in a quart, four quarts in a gallon, how many gallons are in a bushel or a peck, I don't even know or care. Google can tell us, but uh, with the metric system, all you got to do is move the decimal point back and forth and you're done. It's nice and easy and that's why we're going to use the metric system. Yay.